telecommunications. Tonight, will global mobile phones help us stay in touch? <laughs> mobile phones have changed the way people communicate and behave. So much so that this group of performers satirizes the sorts of people with cellular phones you'd least like to meet. As convenient and portable as they are, their use is limited. For each country where the phone is registered, the number is different. And the caller needs to know where you are. Some may regard that as a good thing. But for the globe-trotting cellular communicator, it's a significant limitation. This phone belongs to the new generation in mobile technology, which gives you a personal telephone number that can follow you around the world so you can be contacted or annoyed wherever you go. Using this phone called a GSM phone, I can make phone calls from Australia, New Zealand, France, Hong Kong or any one of 25 participating countries without any restrictions. The secret is digital. This is a standard phone and this is a GSM phone. They look virtually identical. But the GSM phone uses digital technology to process the call rather than the older analog system. It's a bit like the difference between a compact disc and an LP. GSM, which stands for Global Systems for Mobiles, was first proposed in 1982 in Europe. It made sense that nations which were to be united economically and politically should have a uniform means of mobile communication to avoid a babble of confusion. And the idea is catching on. The GSM standard is now being adopted by many countries outside of Europe. All the phones use the same radio frequencies, the same encoding of information, and the same speed of data transmission. This ensures complete compatibility between all the equipment, no matter where it's made or where it's being used. And at the heart of this international personalized telephone system is the SIM, or Subscriber Identity Module. SIM is GSM speak for an electronic chip which contains all the information needed to identify the user and authorize access to the network. All you have to do is insert your chip into the back of the phone. And all SIMs are completely interchangeable between phones. For convenience, some phones have been designed to accept the chip mounted on a piece of plastic that looks like a credit card. I don't even need a phone of my own. If I'm traveling overseas, all I need to do is make certain I take my personal SIM with me. This means that when I hire a car, for example, with a GSM phone, I insert the card here, enter my PIN number, and dial away. All the calls are charged at a local rate, but are centrally billed to my home account. Let's say I'm travelling in Paris, but my home base is in Sydney. When I switch on in the Champs-Élysées, the French end of the system asks the network in Australia if I'm a registered user. And when the answer comes back, yes or oui, the Parisian computer sets up a temporary account and connects my call. All this happens in the blink of an eye. And what if someone in Australia wants to call me? They don't have to know I'm in Paris. They just call my number and the GSM system will find me. Hi, how's everything going? But how secure are our conversations? Well, the answer is pretty secure. For a start, the information is digitized, which means it sounds just like a fax machine signal. Then the bits of information from eight separate conversations transmitted on one frequency are chopped up and mixed around with the conversations on surrounding frequencies. Oh, and by the way, all the data is encrypted and the key to the code is constantly changing. The digital system has other advantages. It will be possible to transmit data and faxes as easily as voice. And many systems include a paging service. This means that the phone operates just like a pager, where messages can be left and appear on the screen of your phone the next time it's switched on, no matter where in the world you are. A 
Of course, one person's mobile office may be another's romantic rendezvous. The growth of cellular phones has been phenomenal. And with GSM technology, that success can only continue. Maybe the time has come to rethink the etiquette of mobile phone use in public. Perhaps a set of international rules that can be understood in any language. Isn't high technology only useful if it makes our lives better?